International Monetary Fund raised its outlook for global growth this year. In a new report, the IMF estimates the global economy grew at 3.1 percent last year and is expected to grow at the same clip this year. That's two tenths of a percentage point higher than what the IMF forecast back in the fall. For more on what's driving this forecast and this brand new World Economic Outlook report, I want to welcome into the program IMF Chief Economist Pierre Olivier Garinchas. Pierre, thanks so much for joining me all the way from Johannesburg. It's great to see you. Thank you, Jennifer. It's great to be with you. So you have raised your outlook for global growth. You see a soft landing this year as global central banks are set to potentially cut rates? Yes, we see, you know, the news are good on two fronts. First, we had a little bit more growth, as you pointed out, 3.1% last year, 3.1% expected for this year, and 3.2% in 2025. And at the same time, we are seeing inflation coming down faster than expected. Headline inflation, core inflation, so meaning excluding food and energy prices, also coming down faster. So a little bit more growth, a little bit less inflation. And... The result is that we are now expecting that a soft landing is more likely. Everyone thought in order to get inflation back under control, we needed to have a recession. Yet, to your point, inflation globally is falling faster than expected. Certainly here in the United States, based on a six-month annualized measure, inflation is back to the Fed's 2% target, and growth has been surprising to the upside. So how do you explain this, and can this continue? Well, so to answer your question, I need to get a little bit into what's behind our revision in growth and, and inflation. And they're both, you know, you can think of what happens on the demand side and what happened on the supply side. So on the demand side, what we saw is countries like the U.S., for instance, we saw very resilient consumption. And we saw also, you know, a little bit of support for aggregate demand coming from government spending and uh, overall fiscal policy. But the other side of the story is on the uh, supply side. On the supply side, what we've seen is very robust labor markets, increased in labor force participation. We've seen unwinding of supply chain blockages, and we've seen energy and uh, commodity prices coming down. And these supply forces seem to be sort of the driving force behind what we're seeing right now. So this is why we have inflation coming down, and at the same time, we're not seeing a recession. Do you think, Pierre, that productivity could actually play into this? I know you say in your report that while you expect more resilient growth, growth is going to be below historical average levels because of what you say in part is low productivity. But I wonder, given that the data is notoriously difficult to measure and we only generally see it in hindsight, if that can also be sort of a missing piece of this puzzle as growth is continued to surprise and inflation continues to come down. Well, first, you know, the supply side story I was just telling, it has sort of a productivity component to it for some aspects. So, for instance, the unwinding of the supply shocks, the coming down of uh, energy prices, this is sort of all supporting activity for a given level of employment, if you want. And that's sort of going in the right direction. And we've seen in the U.S., for instance, we've seen, uh, uh, you know, in the recent quarters, we've seen productivity sort of rebounding from where it was earlier in 2023. We see more growth and sort of the labor market's cooling off a little bit. The result is consistent with faster productivity growth. But we don't see that across all countries and in all places. For instance, in the euro area, we are seeing, you know, that their economy is suffering a little bit more. Growth is not as strong, yet they are creating a lot of jobs. This has been sort of uh, an employment-rich environment, even though output growth has not been as strong. And so productivity has not been part of the story there. But in the U.S. has been a little bit more part of the story. Now, if we take a step back and look at the medium term, we're still concerned that, you know, the growth outlook when we look three, four, five years out is still not as strong as it was maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so in that sense, yes, there is a little bit of a cyclical adjustment on the productivity side, but the underlying more structural drivers are still, a, a, you know, a, a reason for concern. If we look for just the next year ahead, if growth were to surprise to the upside, what would that mean for your inflation outlook and for the rate cuts that are expected from global central banks? Well, Jennifer, I'm going to give you an economist answer. It depends. And, and here, it really depends on whether this surprise, this upside surprise on growth is coming from the demand side. So, for instance, we could have fiscal policy coming in a little bit stronger than, uh, than necessary at this point, and maybe creating a little bit more growth, but causing problem for inflation. Then we'd have more growth, but we'd also have more inflation or consumption being more resilient. If, on the other hand, again, we get some more of this supply side improvements, 
then that would be consistent with inflation coming lower, even if we have a growth uh, upside surprise. So it, it's a little bit dependent on what is the underlying shock here. And right now we think that, you know, we have to be a little bit careful. We don't know if we're going to get more surprises going in the same direction. And we have to make sure that demand doesn't sort of derail us from this from this disinflation path that we're not getting an economy that gets overheated or where there is too much stimulus and that would make you know make it harder later on to bring inflation back all the way to central bank targets to your point in the united states specifically uh i have in my notes you're expecting gdp of 2.1 percent this year uh that's a bit higher than what the fed is projecting which is 1.4 percent and three rate cuts along with that Given that your outlook's a little bit more uh, resilient, shall we say, than the Fed, and that we have seen growth surprise to the upside over the past year here domestically, how does that inform your take on what the outlook for inflation is this year in the United States, as well as how many rate cuts we could see from the Federal Reserve? Do you think three is the correct number? Well, right now we're thinking that the situation, when we look at monetary policy and the inflation path, we see the situation as very two-sided, sort of, in a sense, very balanced. There is a risk if the Fed were to ease too early that this would basically hinder the disinflation process, would inject a little bit more stimulus in the economy before inflation is all the way back, and that would be uh, that would be uh, a bad thing. Uh, there is another risk, which is that the Fed could wait too long and then in a sense, the contractionary policy that we have right now could weigh on growth, and that would be hurting growth more than is necessary. Now, our assessment is that uh, interest rate cuts are coming, but are probably not coming before the second half of this year. So we're expecting that the policy rates are going to remain about where they are until the second half of the year. And then as the disinflation process, uh, process proceeds, as we see further inflation coming down, then the Fed will be in a position to cut interest rates in the second half of the year. Pierre, thank you so much for your insight. We'll have to leave the conversation there, but I so appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining us all the way from Johannesburg. Thank you, Jennifer.